if you shall eat of this fruit, you what? You will die. So meaning when a man sin, a man dies. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Either physical or spiritual is still dead. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So when Satan came in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 4 and said, Has God told you if you eat you will die? You shall surely not die. So Satan confused man and convinced man and man ate of the fruit. So sin came into man. And when I say sin came into man, it is not sin but death has entered into man. Is somebody with me? Yes. yes. Because you have sinned, so death has entered into man. And the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, it says, for the wages of sin is what? Is death. For the wages of sin is what? Death. And if you go to Isaiah 59, it says, the arm of the Lord is not short, neither is yes or death. Heavy, by your iniquities, have separated you from God. So when man sinned and man fell, death has come into man. Iniquity has dwelt in man. Therefore, it is like a poison in man, waiting for the man to die. Waiting for the man to die. Somebody says, death was awaiting man because of sin. Death was, was awaiting, awaiting man, man because, because of, of sin. sin. Because man has eaten of the, what? Of the fruit. Man has rebelled. Man has been disobedient. So, that poison has entered into man. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So therefore, this defeats this defeats the original purpose of God for man. The original intent of God for man has been derailed. Has been derailed. The original intent and plan for man has been ruined by Satan and sin. So God, in His own sovereign word, love and mercy. Made a plan B for God, man. Somebody say plan B for man. Plan, plan B, B for, for man. man. God, look at the situation, the creation he has created. Don't forget that God, when he finished creation, he said it was good. Now sin has come in. So death has come into the something that is good. So God would have to bring another plan in order to restore, in order to redeem, in order to bring the perishing souls back to himself. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Therefore, I am reading from Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. Ephesians chapter 1 7. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Through him, that is through him, we have the redemption of his blood. Through Jesus Christ, we have the redemption of his blood. Amen. So therefore, now God has sought it wise, or God has taught it wise, to bring man back to himself, to bring man back to where man was, to lift man from the grounds. And I am confident the Lord God who sought to bring man back to life is seeking to bring you life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He's looking to bring you back to your destination in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He's looking to bring you back to your purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Challenges might have shifted you. Situations might have shifted you. But I am here to say the Lord God is bringing you back. He's restoring you back to Amen. your original He is bringing you back to the original moment in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You were not born that way, but circumstances have made you who you are. But I want to tell you, the Lord God who created you will not look for you to be destroyed. He is redeeming you back in the mighty Hallelujah. name of Jesus. Praise be to God. Amen. So if God, if God, today our topic is the saving power of the cross. And I am trying to emphasize, bring to your attention the understanding of that saving power. And therefore, you can apply that to your life. And we said the original intent purpose of God is to dwell with men. But sin has come in, so men have fallen. But God has made a plan B. And how is God going to execute this plan B? When God sought to bring man back to himself... How is he going to execute this? I want you to put this thing down. I want you to put this point down. How God is going to achieve his purpose of restoration. One, to defeat Satan. The first point is to defeat what? Satan. Who is the cause? Satan is the cause. Remember in Genesis 3, 4, he came in with what? Temptation and man fell. So Satan is the cause. 
So for God to achieve what he has to or what he wants to, first he has to defeat Satan. Somebody say, God will have to defeat Satan. God, God will, will have, have to, to defeat, defeat Satan. Satan. And we know in, in when God was saying, he says, a, a, a seed of a woman will bruise the head. So that is Jesus Christ God is talking about. Satan is too small for God to fight. That is why he gave him to his son. Is somebody catching the revelation? Yes. Satan is too small to fight God. That is why God gave him to a small boy, son, to fight him. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second point, the second point, God will have to take the keys of death. Don't forget, Satan has caused death to enter into man. Because sin has come into man. And if we don't manage, or if God don't manage the, the, the death, or if God don't take the death from man, men will die. Because God said, surely if you eat of the fruit, you will die. Genesis 2.17. So we know that death is now in man. So for God to restore us, he has to take the keys of death, or take the antidote, or to take the remedy from Satan. The world now is looking for remedy for coronavirus, and I want to tell you it is on the cross. It oh, is yes. part of the cross in oh, the mind yes. of Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus is able to wash everything. The blood of Jesus is able to make all things anew. Amen. The blood of Jesus is able to restore every sickness, Amen. every curse oh, and every yes. disease Amen. under the sun, Amen. under the earth. Amen. The blood of Jesus is able to overcome it. Amen. So the third point God will have to give back the life he promised us. God will have to give back what? The life he promised. In the mighty name of Jesus. God will have to give back the life. That is the third thing. So we are going to talk about God defeating Satan. God defeating Satan. How is God going to defeat Satan? How is God going to win the battle? In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I spoke about the crimes of Satan. I spoke about the sins of Satan. Satan already sinned in heaven and he was cast down from Revelation 12. When he came down, the book of Genesis chapter 3, let's read from 4. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 4. I read, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. God has said in Genesis 2 17 that if you eat of the fruit, you will not die. Therefore, Satan also have told man that when you eat, you will not die. That is the rebellion. Rebellion. Somebody say rebellion. 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 And people are saying it is the serpent that spoke to what? Eve. Why do we bring Satan in? Mm -hmm. Come with me to the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. The book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. Prove to you that the serpent that spoke was Satan himself. The book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. And I read. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. So the great dragon was cast out. <clears throat> that serpent of old. Have you seen the serpent? Mm. The serpent of old. Called the devil and Satan. Who deceives the whole world. And remember in Genesis 3, 4. Adam and Eve were deceived. And John's revelation in Revelation is saying that the dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels with them. So this to buttress the point that the serpent that spoke to Eve was what? Satan. Mm. Are you with me? Oh, yes. Come with me to the book of John chapter 8 verse 34. We are talking about the crime. What Satan did that God have to defeat him. Otherwise, a man will still have been held captive. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We are speaking about the saving power of the cross. Amen. I am reading from John chapter 8 verse 34. John chapter 8 verse 34. And I read. Jesus answered them. Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. So, therefore, I am talking about God having to defeat Satan. Because Jesus has made us aware that whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. Therefore, you'll be in captive to sin. 
So therefore, Satan will rule over you. But if God will have his people to worship him, his people have to be freed. Amen. Remember the days of Exodus. The days when Moses had to take the people, the essence of Moses taking them out was to take them for them to worship God. So if God will have men back to our original focus of worshiping, fellowshipping with him, then God will have to take us from the slavery bondage of sin. But before he can do that, he has to defeat Satan. You cannot go into a strong man and, buy, and take his possession unless you bind him. So God understands this principle that before he can set his people free, he has to take captive of that who has taken us captive. Oh, therefore, the Bible says when he ascended, he took captivity as well. Captives and give men unto, give men what? All gifts. This afternoon, anything that has taken you captive, the Lord God is taking him captivity in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. This afternoon, anything and everything that has kept or that has kept or that is keeping you captive, the Lord God is taking captivity of it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, the great God is setting somebody free in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, upon this, God will have to defeat Satan in order to redeem the church. Somebody say, in order to redeem the church. In, in order, order to, to redeem, redeem the church. The church. So upon the cross, 1 Peter chapter 2, 24, the Bible says he himself bore our sins upon the cross. Jesus took every sin, the chains, you know, sin is heavy. From Hebrews chapter 12, he says, lay aside every little, little sin that easily will beset you. Sin is sickness. Sin is heavy. Sin is bondage. So when sin is upon you, you cannot do the things. So therefore, Jesus took the sins upon himself. In Galatians chapter 3, reading from the verse 13, he says, Curse is he that hung upon the tree. When a man sinned, you go into the curses of Genesis when men fell, that the ground shall be hardened for man to till, that the woman will go through labor in pain. All those things will come into play. Therefore, when Jesus took our sins and our curses upon the tree, upon the cross, there was a change in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So Jesus has now told Satan, let these people go. I am the one who has offended. I have taken this upon myself and I am going to pay the price in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Read with me to the book of Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 to 15. Beloved, I want you to know. Some of us, we are still living in Egypt. Even though God has redeemed us, God has what? Forgiven us our sins. We are still guilty of the sins. Satan is making you guilty of the sins. Therefore, you are not seeing the redemptive power of God. I want to tell you that the blood was shed for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you that the blood was shed for your sins in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you the blood was shed for your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The blood was shed for your word, your liberation in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The blood is still speaking for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. We are reading from Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 first. I want to emphasize that God or Jesus took away your sins and iniquities. Come with me as I read the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, Haven't wiped out, haven't wiped out the handwriting that was against you. He nailed it on the cross. And I will bring you very down. You know, before you can take a man to court, you need evidence. Mm -hmm. I am teaching you how Satan was defeated. Before a man will take you to court, they need to have a concrete evidence in order to prosecute you. Satan had the evidence when Adam fell. When Eve fell, when Cain fell, Satan had all those evidence. But when Jesus came in the scene, because Satan had all this evidence, when he died on the cross, the blood of Jesus, when it was flowing and oozing out, the blood of Jesus wiped, unfortunately, all the evidence of Satan. Amen. Amen. Satan was gallivanting. Satan was rejoicing because he has recorded every evidence. And when he woke up from that slumber, 
the blood of Jesus had wiped away the evidence that Satan had. Therefore, when Satan woke up, he couldn't see any evidence of your sins. When Satan woke up, he couldn't see evidence of your crime. Therefore, Satan becomes startled, confused, derailed, and defeated because he has no evidence against you. Somebody rejoice because Satan has lost his data. Oh, Satan has lost his data. Satan has lost his records. Satan has lost all the information he has against you. Amen. The accusation he Hallelujah. wrote down against you is be wiped off. Amen. It's been wiped off. Amen. Amen. Now Satan taking us before God, he cannot accuse you because the evidence is what? Gone. Amen. Have you seen what Jesus has done? Oh yes. Have you seen the miraculous things Jesus has done? Oh yes. The blood wiped away the accusation, the, the records, the evidence Jesus. that was against you. Therefore, Amen. Colossians chapter 2 verse what, 14 says, the ordinances, the written code that was against you, he nailed it to the cross. Amen. Amen. Are you catching the revelation oh, in the yes, scripture? Yes. He yes. nailed it to the cross. So he took all the evidence and nailed it to the cross by the blood. Let me read the scripture to you. The book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. Chapter 2 verse 14. It says, having wiped out the handwriting. How did Jesus wipe it out? How did he wipe it out? Wow. With the blood of Jesus. Amen. With the blood of Jesus. Amen. He says, haven't wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against you, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Amen. Somebody, Jesus, has wiped it for you with Amen. his blood. Amen. Satan has no evidence against me. Amen. Satan Amen. can no longer accuse me. Amen. Satan can no longer prosecute me. Amen. Because when he takes me to law or when he takes me to court, he has no evidence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you understanding the scripture very well now? Oh, yes. So Satan has no evidence. He has no information. He has no accusation against you. So he cannot, and Satan was not very bright. So he doesn't have good memory to remember. He wasn't all knowing. So he doesn't know. So now the slate or the board is clean for you. Amen. Somebody rejoice for your board is clean. Hallelujah. Somebody rejoice for God has made your board clean in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody give praise unto God for God has redeemed you with his blood. He has wiped Hallelujah. it with his blood. The king of kings has cleansed. The ancient of this has wiped. I am free by the blood. I am released by the blood. I am set free by the blood. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. We are still talking about the defeat of Satan. We are still talking about the defeat of Satan. Satan now has no evidence. Let's read the verse 15. It says, having disarmed principalities, mm. because Jesus has disarmed them, he has taken all their evidence. The ones they have against you, he says he has disarmed them, because they no longer have the evidence. Jesus has squeezed the hand of Satan and taken the evidence. Amen. Let's read. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Let me break it down very well for you. The Bible says, having disarmed, mm -hmm. having disarmed Satan and his principalities, when he took the power from them, the Bible says he made a public show of them. Mm -hmm. He exhibited them on the street. He made a procession in them. That's why Paul says we triumph in the procession of Christ. He made a public word, speak, or speech of them. Everybody saw. And when we say triumphing in them, it is when you are coming back from war and you are coming with the prisoners of war, you have chained them. You, they have no power. They are in handcuffs. They are in chains. And you are walking on the street with men. Which ones they were my, men of what valor? You are coming with soldiers which ones were able to fight and kill. But now you have disarmed them and you are making sure of them. That is, you are triumphing over them. You are rejoicing over them. You are making known publicly over, over, over them. And therefore, whenever Satan remembers this day, that is why whenever you lift the cross up, Satan will flee. Amen. Amen. 
because he remembers this day. Oh yes. That is why even in horror movies, when people leave the cross, the, the bad people flee. That is why in horror movies, people leave the cross, then evil will flee. Amen. Because Satan understands purposely the, the definite loss. It was a finality of all the battles where Satan was put in his place and Jesus was put in his place. And it was a permanent and ever permanent defeat for Satan. This defeat can never be undo in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody rejoice in the mighty name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Rejoice in the mighty name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Rejoice in the mighty Hallelujah. name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me show you something in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 10. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 10. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 10. Something very simple. If you are a bit confused, let me show you. I am reading from 9 to 10. It says, now this, he ascended. What does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of what? Earth. Before Jesus could ascend, he was lowered. Don't forget, he descended into Hades. He was buried. He went into the earth. That is where Satan and his cohorts were. And at that point, he disarmed Satan and his people. And he resurrected. He came back himself. Beloved, many times when the miners go down, they need something to bring them up. But Jesus went down and he came up by himself. Amen. The empty tomb you see today. The empty tomb we talk about today signifies the victory and the defeat of Satan. Amen. The empty tomb you have witnessed today tells of the defeat of Satan. Amen. Amen. Glory. Jesus said, I will destroy the temple and raise it three days. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am preaching to somebody this afternoon. There might be things that have been dead in your life. There are situations which are dead in your life. But I am speaking life to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, the resurrection power is bringing them back to life. Amen. The saving power is bringing them back to life. Amen. Amen. If it is your marriage that is Amen. in trouble, we are bringing it back to life. Amen. Every circumstances in your life, we are bringing it back Amen. to life in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. The saving power is at work. Amen. Every aspect of your life. Amen. And touch your life Amen. and touch Amen. your destiny Amen. and touch your purpose Amen. with the saving power of the Lord Hallelujah. and it is coming back to life. Hallelujah. Somebody rejoice for the Lord God Hallelujah. is bringing that which is dead in your life back Hallelujah. to life. Amen. The Lord is bringing back that Hallelujah. which is dead in back to life. Whatsoever is dead in your life is coming back. Amen. It's coming back. Hallelujah. Whatsoever is dead in your life is coming back. Amen. Whatsoever is dead in your life is coming back. Amen. Everything that is dead in your life is coming Amen. back. Amen. Your business is coming back. Hallelujah. Your marriage is coming back. Hallelujah. Oh, your health is coming back. Hallelujah. Your job is coming back. Hallelujah. Your immigration is coming back. In the, in the mighty Jesus. name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Those who have lost vision. Those with poor what, relationship with God. The saving power is bringing them back to life. Hallelujah. So that is the first point. Satan has been defeated. Second, Jesus will have to take the keys. He has to take the antidote. He has to take the remedy or he has to take the cure for death. Because death, which is sin, has now entered into man. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come with me to the book of 1 Corinthians. We shall read from 15, 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. It is amazing what the Lord is doing. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me read this to you first. Luke chapter 23, 39. I will make reference to it. Don't move. Luke chapter 23, verse 39. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are Christ, save yourself and us. Save yourself and us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So one of the thieves asked Jesus this question, but Jesus did not forget this question. He has to answer this question. If he is Christ, save yourself and save us. So the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 520 says, Are we there? 
First Corinthians chapter 5. But now Christ is risen from the dead. But now Christ is what? Risen from the what? Dead. And has become the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is the scripture right on this? It says Christ, Jesus is what? Risen from dead. And he will be the first person to resurrect from dead. But then you will tell me Dorcas rose to, from death. You will tell me Lazarus rose from death. The difference is those people have died again. So Jesus will be the first who has resurrected from death. Or the first who has what? Defeated death. Amen. Satan is the first person who has what? Defeated what? Death. He is the first person who has died and come back to life and will not die again. Therefore, he is the first fruit among those who have fallen. So we know that now Jesus has died and he has resurrected. Therefore, he knows how to resurrect or he knows how to come back. Or he perchance have the power to bring back to life. Amen. So we cannot say that save yourself and save us. Now, the question that was asked in Luke chapter 3, 39 does not what? Stand. Because we know Jesus has come back to life. Is somebody with me? The same way your life has come back to life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The same way your vision has come back to life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Somebody rejoice for you are back to life in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For you are back to life in the mighty Hallelujah. name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You are of course in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. So Jesus has what? Defeated death. He has resurrected. He has overpowered death. He has overcome death. He has a cure for death. Are you in agreement with me? Yes. Now Jesus has an agreement. Let's go to the same chap uh, chapter we read from 54 to 55. The same chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from 54 to 55. 54 to 55. It is very amazing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I read, so when this corruptible has put on the incorruptible, remember Jesus was sown as corruptible. He was sown as perishable because he took our sins on him. He was corruptible. Because our sins made him corrupted. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 21 says, He that anywhere no sin was made sin for us. So with our sins and our curses on him, he became corruptible. He became what? Perishable. But the Bible says he resurrected as what? Incorruptible. Imperishable. Amen. Praise Amen. be to God. Hallelujah. So when this corruptible has put on the incorruption, and this mortar has put on the immortality, then shall be brought to pass, saying, this is written. So uh, Paul was talking about us, that when we also die and we resurrect, we can no longer die again. We know Jesus has resurrected in 1 Corinthians 15, 20. And Paul is talking or liking our resurrection to it in the verse 54. Let's look at uh, the last bit. It says, death is swallowed in victory. At that point, and I said the other day that death is the last word enemy to be defeated so when we defeat death we shall no longer have any enemy again and paul is saying that death has been swallowed in victory mm -hmm. and look at what it says it says oh death where is your stage oh death where is your power i want to ask the coronavirus where is your power for mm -hmm. the blood of jesus has been lifted against you Amen. for the cross is speaking against you Amen. the resurrection power is working against Hallelujah. you jesus has swallowed you up oh, in death yes. you will not have effect against in us you will not jesus. come against us in the name you will of not jesus. work against us you will not jesus. affect our children in the name you will not of affect jesus. our you will not affect our parents Amen. for the blood of Jesus has been lifted against Amen. you. The same power of the cross is against you. Amen. And the cross is speaking against you. Amen. The cross is waging against you. Amen. The cross has been lifted against you. Hallelujah. You are Amen. defeated for good. In the name of Jesus. He says, oh, hate, where is your victory? Grave, where is your victory? Hmm. The stint of death is what? is sin. And the strength of it is in the Lord thereof. So Jesus had now died and he has taken victory over sin. 
Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 2. I am proving to you how Jesus overcame death, how he took the keys of death, and how he handed the keys to you. And you will know that from today going forward, the power of what? Death has been given over you. Therefore, you have the ability to make life or make death. That is why the Bible says the power of life and death is in your tongue. And Amen. whatever you speak as a child of God will come to pass. Hallelujah. This afternoon, I speak life over you. Amen. Amen. This afternoon, I will lose life over you. Amen. This afternoon, I will lose life over Amen. you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Every aspect of your life, needing life, I speak life into you. Hallelujah. Anybody sick, watching, or what, listening to me, may you be healed. Amen. Amen. May you be healed. Amen. May you be healed. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. May the Lord God make you complete. Everything now concerns you. May he make you perfect. Amen. All that is in you. By his blood. Come with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. We are reading from 14 and 15. Hebrews chapter 2, 14 and 15. It says, In as much then as the children have partake, partaken of the flesh and the blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through the death he might destroy him. Through what death? He might destroy him who had the power of death. Who is this person who has power over death? Are you there? Oh, he says, yes. that is the devil. Mm -hmm. That is the devil. Hebrews chapter 4, 2, 14. Read with me. Everybody read. Hebrews chapter 2, 14. He says, in as much then as the children have partaken of the flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death, the true death of Jesus himself, he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is devil. And has this happened? This has happened in our days. Jesus had died and he has destroyed Satan and his cohort. Let's read the 15. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Amen. Amen. It says through the death of Jesus, when he destroys Satan, the power or the owner of death, then those who have been kept in captivity, Jesus will release them. Amen. Amen. So Jesus is setting you free or he has set you free. He has broken. Are you hearing me all right? Oh, yes. He's breaking free. He's breaking free. He is releasing you from every captivity of death. So, therefore, Satan has no power over you. He has no power over you. Amen. Our last scripture concerning Jesus taking the keys, taking the authority, dominion from Satan. Come with me to the book of Revelation chapter 1, 18. When Jesus has taken the power from Satan, Satan can no longer inflict you. Satan can no longer put you under bondage. Somebody you have been set free by the power of the blood. Amen. Somebody you have been set free by the power of the Hallelujah. cross. Somebody you have been set free by the Son. The Bible says, He the Son set free is free indeed. Amen. I am free in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I am free from curses. Amen. I am free from coronavirus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He has free. set me free from the virus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I am free. The blood of Jesus is speaking for me. Amen. Amen. The blood has speaketh better things than that of Abel. The blood is still oozing out on my behalf. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 118. We are talking about Jesus taking the keys from Satan. That is taking the death keys, antidote of Satan. And Revelation chapter 118 reads. I am he who lives. Jesus is introducing himself. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive evermore. He has told you that he liveth. He is now living, but he died and he resurrected. And he will not die anymore. Amen. 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 And, Amen. And listen to the last bit. And I have the keys of hate and what? Death. Glory. 
Are you catching the revelation? Oh, yes. Jesus has got the keys of grave and death. So therefore, if Jesus has the keys, then he has opened us. He has what released us. Amen. That's why he said he took captivity captives. Mm. He has set us free because Jesus has disarmed mm. Satan. Amen. He has taken the keys of death from Satan. Amen. So now Satan do not have power over death because Jesus has overcome what? Death and is alive. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And therefore you will live as well. Amen. He says those who yeah. believe in me, they will live Shut even up. though they die, they shall be what? alive. Amen. Amen. Don't forget keys signifies authority when you have key. So that said, Jesus has authority over death. Amen. Amen. Keys signify control. Jesus have control over death. See, keys signify ownership. Jesus is the one who will decide who dies because he has the keys. And the Bible says, as many as will believe in him, he will give them life. Amen. Amen. Are you catching the revelation? Oh, yes. He is a life giver. Now the keys is with him. He decides who lives or who dies. Keys also signify dominion. Dominion. When God created man, he says, let them have dominion. When men fell, when men sinned, this dominion went into the hands of what Satan. So when Jesus went on the cross and he descended into the hell, he took these keys, this authority, this dominion back onto man. Amen. Amen. Are you having the knowledge now? Oh, yes. Somebody, the Lord God is showering you with ideas, with knowledge. Are you Amen. He, in I the mighty name it. of Jesus. Amen. 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 Don't forget, he said something to Peter. He said, Peter, I give you the keys to the kingdom. I give you the keys to the kingdom. So Jesus have the authority in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now we know that Satan has been defeated. Jesus has taken the keys of death. Now how is he going to give to us? Hmm. He has to give us back life. Somebody say God will have to give us back life. God, God will, will have, have to, to give, give us, us back, back life. life. The book of John. The book of John chapter 10 verse 10. The book of John chapter 10 verse 10. The book of John chapter 10 verse 10. He says the thief cometh not to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Remember, the thief stole Eve in the garden and killed them by what? The sin. Because they were dead. They were no longer communing with God because sin had entered into them. And he destroyed their purpose. He destroyed their place in the garden. So the Bible says the thief comes to steal, one, to steal you from God. When he is able to steal you from God, he kills you with sin and iniquity. Therefore, God can no longer have communion with you. And he will destroy you or destroy the purpose you have. But Jesus says something. He says, I have come that you will have life. And have it what? Abundantly. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, I have come, you will have what? Life, such that you will have it abundantly. Amen. But Jesus cannot give you life until he resurrected. So if Jesus did not resurrect, he couldn't have given you life. Mm. Somebody rejoice for the resurrection day. Hallelujah. If Christ Hallelujah. has not come back to life for me Glory. and you, we would have been wasted. Glory. There would have been no hope for us. There would have been no hope for our oh, faith. Yes. We would have been the most pitied people on oh, earth yes. if Christ did not resurrect. Hallelujah. Our faith yeah. would have been in vain. Hallelujah. Our worshiping would have been in vain. Mm. Christ would have to resurrect in order to give you life. Amen. That is why he says, that I have come. Search that you will have life and have it abundantly. Amen. Somebody received abundant life. Somebody Amen. received Amen. abundant I life. Receive it. Somebody received abundant I receive life. It. I received it. abundant I receive life. It. Received it. abundant Jesus life. I receive In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In every aspect of your life, receive abundant life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I receive it. In the name of Jesus. Beloved, when we talk of abundant life, not the abundance of wealth or stuff, but abundance of His glory. 
Amen. Remember, it says, when men sin, we fell short of his glory. Ooh. So we will live in abundance of his glory. Amen. And the glory of the Lord, when it is upon you, all things are possible for you. Hallelujah. When the glory of the Lord is God is upon you, he orders your steps. Oh, when the glory yes, of the Lord is upon you, the Lord God usher you into greatness. Thank in you, the Jesus. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The word of God in Obadiah 1 17 say, Upon Mount Zion there shall be what? Deliverance. Deliverance is salvation, it's rescuing. Deliverance is rescuing. And it says, There shall be holiness, there shall be righteousness until the Lord God has rescued and given you salvation. You cannot live right. And the third bit, it says, and the people of the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. For you to possess your possession, you ought to be delivered. Amen. You ought to have salvation. Amen. In order for you to be back to where you were, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, somebody, you are possessing your possession, which is Hallelujah. eternal life. Amen. Somebody, you are possessing your Hallelujah. original intent, in the mighty Glory. name of Jesus. Glory. Everything that has kept you captive is being broken. In the name Let of every Jesus. yoke be broken in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. Let Amen. every yoke be broken in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Let every yoke be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let sickness and disease be destroyed by the blood, by the power, Amen. by the blood, by the power. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, you are being redeemed from in the every name cases. Of Jesus. Amen. You have redeemed from every curse. Every generational curse, every ancestral curse has been broken. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians says, He that knew what no sin was made sin for you, such that you have his righteousness. So, for once, Jesus gave you his what? Righteousness. That is life. And took your sins. He gave you the righteousness, the ticket to heaven. The ticket to abundance life and took your word, your sins. The word of God in Second Corinthians verse 5 17 it says, He who comes to Christ is a new creation. Behold, all old things are passed away. That said, if there is sicknesses, it has passed away. Amen. That said, there is failure, it has passed away. Amen. That said, it's shame, it has passed away. Amen. Every calamity has passed away. Amen. Because all things have been made new in Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Everything has been made new in Christ. Somebody Amen. say, everything of mine has been made new in Christ. Everything, everything of mine has, has been made new, new in Christ. Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. By his power and by his authority. Amen. Beloved, I want to tell you that new things are coming your way. Hallelujah. By the understanding of this scripture today, that everything that cometh to Christ is made new. Amen. You are being made new. You are being made anew. You are being Amen. made whole. In the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You are going forth with the newness Amen. of his power. I am going you forth. are going forth with the power I and the going forth in, in the name, name of Jesus. 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 Amen. Amen. Come with me as we read the book of Second Gal Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians 2 20. Galatians 2 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Amen. Amen. And the life which I have now in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So I told you that God gives life, or Jesus gives life, mm. because he took life, or the power of life, from Satan. And now he's able to give life. And Amen. Paul is what testifying that now him living, it is not him, but it is Jesus who lives in him. Amen. Amen. So anyone who comes to Christ, you die to self. You die to yourself. Amen. That's why it says, take up your cross and follow me. Mm. So when you go through the baptism and the resurrection, you die with him and you resurrect with him. Mm. So it is no longer you that lives, but Christ who lives in you. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Somebody Amen. thank God for the grace that he has oh, given Lord, unto you. I thank Hallelujah. you for the grace, Lord. Rabba Shanda, Rabba Zunda. So now, therefore, it is God who determined the pace. The Bible says the steps of the righteous is ordered of the Lord. It is no longer Satan who determines your outcome. Somebody who have been spared from the damnation. Somebody who have been spared from hell fire. Somebody who have been redeemed from the curses. Somebody who have been restored to your originality. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, Jesus has given you life. 
He has defeated Satan. He has took the keys of death and he has now given you life. What do you have? Or what can you do with the life? I'm going to run you through a few basic things you can do with that power and with the life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The first I will talk about is the reconciliation. Reconciliation and forgiveness. When we say reconciliation, to be reconciled back. I am going to show this diagram here. In time past, this is God here. This is God. And we have man. And we have Jesus and the Holy Spirit there. And when man sinned, there was a gap. You can see God, you can see man, and you see the gap. But the Romans were very unwise. They used the cross. And if you look at the cross, the cross had four edges. Mm -hmm. The first one going up to God. The, the opposite is mankind. The other side is Jesus Christ. And the other side is what the Holy Spirit. If you look, the cross was put on the ground. That is to signify that they are reconciling man to God. Amen. Are you catching the revelation? Yes. And now when Jesus went on the cross, this is the cross. God there, man there, and Jesus and Holy Spirit, they have bridged the gap. Mm. They have bridged the gap. If you see it well. If you see from this and you look at this one, you will know that when Jesus went on the cross, Jesus has been a propitiation. He has been an atonement. He has breached the gap. The Bible says, by your iniquities have separated you from God. I so agree. Jesus had now gone in between God and man. And he has breached the gap. And therefore now man has access to God, which is the reconciliation. So the essence of Jesus on the cross it's the reconciliation and the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Amen. Reconciliation and the forgiveness of sins. You can find that in what? Colossians 1, 19 to 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. And Ephesians 2, 13. Ephesians 2, 13. So pray scriptures for the reconciliation. I am reading Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. It says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off, have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Reconciliation. So the blood of Jesus has brought you nearer. You that were once a sinner, you that were once what, an outcast, by the blood of Jesus and by the cross, by the redemptive power of the cross, by the saving power of the cross, you have been brought nearer. You have been reconciled with your maker. You have been reunited with your God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The benefit of the cross, the salvation, the benefit of the cross, the salvation. The second point, the power or the saving power of the cross gives us the ability over sin. And gives us the power or the right to become the sons of God. The sons of God. So uh, the scriptures I have is Ephesians chapter 2, 18 to 19. The Romans chapter 1, verse 16. It says the salvation is the power of God. And this power is the power that brings us to God. And John 1 verse 12, it says, as many as believe in him, he gave them the power. He gave them the right to become the sons of God. Amen. He gave them the right to become the sons of God. Amen. Now, I'm going to take you to the power over sins. How to overcome sins. Or the, the, the saving power, giving us the power over sins. Come with me to the book of Romans. We shall read from Romans chapter 6, verse 3 to 6. It is something very good there. Romans chapter 6. The power over sins. The power. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 6. And I read. Or do you not know that as many of us, as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Verse 4. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, 
Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Verse 5. For if we have been united together, reconciliation, united together, in the likeness of his death, certainly we are also shall be in the likeness of his what? Resurrection. Amen. Verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. Knowing this, that your old man, your old self, your old self was crucified with him. That the body of sin might be done away with. Amen. That the body of sin might be done away with. Amen. That we should no longer be slaves of sin. Hallelujah. So Amen. Paul was talking of that being crucified with Christ, being resurrected, you are resurrected with him. Knowing this, that your old self was crucified with him, that no longer was sin have dominion over you. Amen. Amen. And let me explain that further. Let me go down and bring you understanding. The Bible talks of 1 Peter 2, 24, that he bore our sins, our iniquities. Galatians 3, 13, talk of that, the curse. So curses, generational curses, ancestral curses that were upon us, Jesus took it upon the cross. When Jesus took it upon the cross, meaning he took them from us. In time past, you had sins, you had curses, so you couldn't struggle, you couldn't fight back. You were held down by your iniquities. You were held down by your sins. Beloved, let me tell you something. Where I come from in Ghana, some of the thieves or armed robbers are very strong, but once they are arrested, they can't fight back. They become weak. So when men fell, you become weak. The sins has made you weak. That's why Hebrews 12 says, let us put away little, little sin. That, that obstructs us from going forward. So when Jesus took the sins from you, you became lighter. And now you are able to throw punches back. You are now able to what? Fight back. You are now able to overcome sins because you are no longer pinned down. You were crushed down, but you were not destroyed. So when God took the sins away from you, you got back on your feet with the newness of life. And therefore, you have power over sins. Because God has emptied you of every entanglement. God has taken every word, shackles off you. He has taken every bondages off you. And you can now fight back. Amen. Amen. Are you catching the revelation? Oh, yes. So men now have dominion over sin. Now you can look at sin and say, I am not falling to this sin. In time past, you will fall flat. But now you no longer because God has taken it. Somebody clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Give a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for taking away your Hallelujah. sins. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And now he says, we are ambassadors of Christ. The, the third point. The essence of the salvation, when God took away our iniquities, our sins, he says he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. First, Second Corinthians chapter 5, 18, 20. And he says that we are ambassadors what, of Christ. We are ambassadors of what? Christ. So somebody, when we say you are ambassador, ambassador unites the citizens to their native country. Are you catching it? Oh, yes. Ambassadors, their duty is to link the people on the strange land to their native country. So we here, we are not of this world, but we are in this world here to unite the believers back to heaven. We are here to connect our lost folks. We are here to connect our lost folks back to the kingdom of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So Jesus has given you the ambassadorial work. He has given you the power to reconcile. Amen. He has given you the grace to go out and evangelize. Amen. And therefore, when he, has going, when he was going in Mark 16, he commissioned you to go forth and speak the word. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I am entreating you to use this power to evangelize. Amen. I am entreating you to use this moment to speak the word. Amen. I am entreating you to use this hour to speak the word. Amen. Because curse has been taken from you. Mm. Jesus has sets you free. Amen. And therefore you can speak forth the word of God. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's read the book of Mark 
chapter 16, the Great Commission, and he said to them, Go into the go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mm. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Amen. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And Amen. this sign shall follow them those who believe. Amen. This sign shall follow them those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. Hallelujah. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Based on this word, I want to assure you the virus will not hurt you in the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, according to the word of God, according to his commission, according to his orders, according to the charge Jesus gave to us, that we should go and evangelize the word. Mm -hmm. We should go and speak the word. Mm -hmm. And we are here speaking the word. He says, no deadly thing will hurt us. I want you to be confident of this power. Amen. I want you to be confident of this might. That Amen. God Jesus. is with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. He's Lord. with you. Amen. The Lord God is with you. The great I am is with you. Hallelujah. It is he who has what commissioned you. Amen. Amen. He has sent you forth as an ambassador. And therefore, heaven is backing you. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The fourth point I will speak of is Jesus gave us the ticket to life mm -hmm. or the ticket to live right he gave us the righteousness and righteousness is the seed to live holy the finished work of christ on the cross is the beginning work of our salvation oh the word of god in philippians chapter 2 verse 12 it says work out your salvation with fear and tremble it didn't say work for your salvation you don't work for your salvation it is the grace of god that you are what saved so you work it out. So Jesus has given you the seed. He has given you that which it takes to work it out. Therefore, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who will strengthen me. Amen. May the grace of God be your portion in the mighty Amen. And the last point I'm going to talk to you about is restoration. The original intent of God is for man to live forever with him. The original intent of God is for man not to die. But men fell and we ate of the fruit and we died. So when Jesus came and he took over Satan, he has taken the keys of death. Now Jesus will give us life evermore that we shall no longer die anymore. Amen. Somebody is asking me how. Come with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We read this and we'll be gone. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7, 15 to 17. 1 Thessalonians 4. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Amen. 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. The dead in Christ. Those who have died in Christ will rise first. Then who are alive? Those who will be alive at the coming of the Lord. And remain, shall be caught up. Look at the word. It says, and remain. Beloved, don't slip from it. Irrespective of the persecution that will come at the end times. Don't slip from it because the scripture says, and remain. So you have to remain in Christ at his coming. Amen. He says we shall be caught up together in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. And Hallelujah. that is the originality of God. So the cross has given you what? The restoration. Amen. The cross of Jesus has brought you the restoration. The saving power of the Lord has brought you back to your saving point. And Amen. you will live evermore without being afraid of death. Or without dying, without persecution, without trouble. You will live a triumphant what, life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The saving power is still active today in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, the power is still active today. Amen. Oh, to restore your heart in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. 
Amen. To restore your marriage in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. To restore your resurrection in the mighty name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. To restore your immigration. Amen. To restore your job. Amen. To restore your childlessness. To restore your ministry. Amen. To restore your relationship with God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, the power is still active and it's at work. Amen. I want you to be confident of the resurrection power. Amen. I want you to be confident of the saving power. Amen. It is still active in your life. Amen. It is still active in the church. It is still active in the world. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. it is my prayer that the saving power will save you and your family from the coronavirus. Amen. In Amen. the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. let the saving power of the cross preserve or preserve and exempt you and yourself, Lord, your family from the cross. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. may you live bold as a lion. May you be confident in the might and the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody lift your voice and begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. May the Lord bless you. May he favor you. In the mighty name of Jesus.